My name is Danica. I'm a contributing editor at Book Riot, and today I wanted to talk about my reader's Achilles heel. So if you've been reading Book Riot for a while, you're probably familiar with the term genre kryptonite. And if you're not, I highly recommend you go and check out people's genre kryptonite posts. The point of that is that those are the buzzwords, the kind of subgenres, the tropes that make you just instantly invest in a book. It's what you cannot resist reading. So for me, I really like books and movies movies and TV shows that take place in small spaces. So that's a genre kryptonite of mine. Obviously also anything with queer characters will more than double the chances that I'll pick a book up. So I think we all have those areas of genre kryptonite, things that we cannot resist, that we're always drawn to. And then we also have the genres that we're the most literate in. So these are the kind of books that when you pick it up you can see the plot twist coming a mile away, you know what the tropes are, you can see the kind of shorthand that authors are using. You're really familiar with that subgenre or genre and you get its subtleties, you know what to look for, you know how to navigate a book in that genre. Usually these are books that we pick up a lot, obviously, they're books we've read a lot and that's how we became so familiar with them. But as a result of that love of going back to it over and over, we develop this literacy, this real knowledge of that genre. But I want to talk about the opposite of that. What is your reader's Achilles heel? And by that I don't just mean genres or styles that you don't like. For instance, I tend to not pick up a lot of romance novels, but they're not my Achilles heel. I can read them, I have read them, I can understand them, I can really enjoy some of them, they're just something that I tend not to gravitate towards. But I'm talking about the genres or styles or tropes even that you just cannot get through, you can't understand, you can't navigate, or you find really difficult. So for me, I have a terrible memory for a lot of things, but dates and names are some of the things that I find the most difficult to keep track of. I'm also not a visual person, I can't really hold images in my mind very well, I don't have a lot of spatial awareness, so I can't really tell where things are relative to each other. That's not even getting into my difficulties with time. How do I even get through the day to day? Your guess is as good as mine. But the point is, these are some readerly defects that I bring to books, and that affects the reading experience differently depending on the genre, depending on the style. So for me, books with multiple points of view are difficult, and especially books that have a large cast. It requires that I keep track of a lot of names and how they relate to each other and that is very hard for me to do. What I often end up doing is just latching on to a few of the characters and just letting it slide that I don't remember a lot of the minor characters, sometimes even some of the point of view characters I won't remember. Recently I've been reading The Mirror Empire by Cameron Hurley. This is a trilogy and each volume is like 500 pages, 600 pages. This is definitely epic fantasy and it's what got me thinking about readers Achilles heels and how epic fantasy is one of mine. I will preface by saying I'm really enjoying this book. I think it is masterful in its execution. It's so complex and multi-layered but it has at least eight point of view characters and I would say five of those are major point of view characters that we come back to a lot. Most of the point of views don't have a lot of overlap so it means that there are a ton of minor characters because every point of view has a whole cast of characters around them. And that means that there are so many names for me to keep track of. Anytime a book starts with a map, I usually see that as a red flag. It generally means geography is pretty important to the story, and since I can't tell you where things in my city are relative to each other, I have no chance of remembering that in a fantasy setting. And of course because it's fantasy, all the names and the place names are unfamiliar, which makes it a little harder for me to file them away. This book is full of complex and morally gray characters. It has political plots within countries, between countries, and between parallel worlds. One of the things I'm most enjoying about it is how queer it is, how it really looks at gender and sexuality and re-examines it. So there are a lot of different countries and cultures in this book, and each has their own relationship with gender. One culture has three sexes and three sets of pronouns. One culture only recognizes two sexes, but it has five sets of pronouns. They have different understandings around consent for any kind of touch. Polyamory and polygamy is the norm through most of these cultures, which means that they also have different definitions for family and who is related to each other. There's so many big ideas here and the world building is incredibly intricate. Each country and their culture feels distinct and fully realized with its own rich backstory. I'm really interested in what this book is doing, but I'm also having such difficulty reading it. And that's not a fault of the book, it's just because 
because it is my reader's Achilles heel. I think the only thing harder for me to read than a huge epic fantasy would be like dense political or philosophical theory. I've been inching through this book so slowly because I'm overwhelmed by it, but I can't put it down because it's so well done. I'm actually following along with the characters a lot better than I thought I would, which I think really speaks to how distinct they are and how well they're written. It's been a difficult time for me to read in general, so I think trying to tackle my reader's Achilles heel was a bit ambitious for right now. So I've actually ended up alternating chapters of the Mirror Empire with this phone game that I'm totally sucked into, and that's really helped me move through it. But I have to tell you, I came up with this idea for the video yesterday, and then I was reading the book, and I realized this book has a glossary in the back. 450 pages into this book, I realized that it has a glossary with the names and the places and all of the vocabulary in it. I cannot tell you how much this would have helped me if I realized it at the beginning. It did not have to be this difficult, so I'm definitely kicking myself about it now, but it's gonna be a lot easier to read the next two books in the series knowing that they actually come with a glossary. I can't believe I didn't look. I am very frustrated with myself. But anyway, I'd like to hear what your reader's Achilles heel is. Do you thrive on fast-paced, plot-driven books and you cannot get through character-based stories no matter how well written they are? Does poetry make you feel like your brain is fogging up? Do you end up too distracted by scientific errors to enjoy sci-fi? What's a genre that you would like to read more of but you find it difficult to get through even if you're enjoying it? I'd love to hear what your reader's Achilles heels are. For me, obviously, epic fantasy is a big one, but I also have trouble with mystery because I tend to just not pay attention to the small details and I miss a lot of the clues and things I should have been picking up on. So let me know what your reader's Achilles heel is in the comments. I'd love to hear from you there and thank you for watching.